Hi, Hannah here from Zoop, the UK's fastest growing new job board. Today I am joined by entrepreneur Martin Port, the CEO of Big Change, an award-winning resource management service. Thank you very much for joining me, Martin. Hi, uh, good morning, Hannah. Uh, thank you for inviting me. No problem. So your company, Big Change, has successfully transformed the way that companies of all sizes manage their mobile workforce and operations through innovative technology. What's more, as a technology pioneer, you've also founded Masternaut, a telematics company specialising in fleet and asset management. So given your highly successful career, I'd like to ask you a few questions about what you've learned along the way and what advice you can give job seekers who are looking to follow in a similar path. So, Martin, can you tell me how you started out in your chosen field and what made you choose it? So, um, uh, my, my basically working life started when I was about 13. I was in consumer goods to start with, then I got into uh, the bakery industry. Um, and then um, about 22 years ago, something completely different. I uh, had the opportunity to work for a, a PLC that was partly owned by GE that was involved in vehicle telematics. Uh, I joined them as the marketing director, and uh, that's really where, how I got into uh, technology uh, per se. And um, and then in 2002, obviously, I set up Masternaut, which was a became Europe's largest business-to-business -business vehicle tracking uh, business. Uh, we had about nearly 200,000 subscribers, about uh, approaching probably 10,000 customers across Europe. Brilliant. What has been your biggest challenge throughout your career? Um, I think it was the two, 2008, you know, the banking crisis. At that moment in time, um, I was building Masternal, a, a, a really uh, great growth business. Every bank was clamoring to lend me the money. Uh, most of the, the loan was to do with the property related in the, in the transaction. Property was worth about five million. And then from one day to the next, the banks said, um, you know, um, we're not lending six million anymore, we're gonna lend you three million um, because they've revalued the property. So obviously I had to reduce headcount, um, cut costs, um, and then also obviously keep focused on growing the business in sales um, and manage to ride that storm. But obviously that, that may, may help make me battle hard for today's current crisis. COVID-19 and um, I feel like I'm in a better place now. Uh, we have no bank borrowings and uh, um, obviously managing, managing this current crisis quite well. What has been your proudest achievement? Masternal, um, I would say was the proudest moment when I, uh, my first big success, when I sold the company and finally sold it in 2011. So I'm very proud of that. I've also won, obviously, awards um, along the journey. Um, and I would say the, um, uh, the, the best award that I've, I've won most recently was the Queen's Award for Enterprise um, in 2020, which was for in the innovation category. And I think that's a, an award that's well known throughout the world. Brilliant. And if you could start all over again, would you do anything differently and why? No, I don't think I would. I think, you know, you do ha have to have setbacks. You can have a failure and still be a success, you know, by learning from mistakes and um, gaining experience that, you know, everyone's different. Have you experienced any failures? And if so, what have you learned from them? So I, I would say I haven't really had a, a big failure as such. I've never been bankrupt I've never um, um, uh, had to close a business you know put a business into liquidation my uh, I would say my only real uh, real tax failure was not making my bakery business a big success um, I would say um, it was a reasonable success but in terms of financial rewards it wasn't um, what I, I was expecting and what would you say is the best investment that you have made to date? The best investment I've made to date is obviously the business um, uh, that I'm in currently. Uh, the name of the company is obviously Big Change. 
and you know have ambitions to make it a unicorn business which is um, essentially a one billion pound valuation business I think in the current climate it, it, you know that's gonna maybe set me back a year or two what inspires and motivates you to get up every morning I love having a team around me you know the team of big change are amazing and um, the, the, it gives me the opportunity to work with some really uh, smart and motivated people and every day uh, you know my task my job is to get more out of every individual I'm always uh, looking to improve but I would say that um, you know, working with a great team that gives me the motivation to make every make us even more successful great what is the one thing that you find to be true that most other people would disagree with so I would say that my interview style is probably different to most. I really like to get to know the people that I'm interviewing. Every single employee out of the 170 we employ, I've uh, interviewed personally. Uh, I want to know about their backgrounds, their family, what knowledge they have about business. Um, but people tend to sometimes disagree with my style, sometimes say it's bordering a little bit in terms of asking too many questions. But at the end of it, I feel that um, uh, recruiting the right people is so important. And I think, um, uh, you know, getting to know the person and make sure they've got the right DNA is crucial. What charities do you support and why? I'm an ambassador for a charity called TransAid, which is a charity which um, is, is uh, dealing really with um, safe driving in Africa and also helping to reduce deaths caused by malaria um, so that's I spent time with that charity and also a road safety charity in the UK called break which we support probably support around uh, 20 different charities going from religious charities to humanitarian charities how do you avoid burnout I, I really find that the Sabbath helps me avoid burnout um, you know I turn off my laptop and my phone on a Friday evening, uh, and then for about 25 hours, um, completely focus on my family, which I think is so important. And it helps you um, really focus and refresh yourself for the week ahead. Optimism or pessimism, which is better for business? I'm definitely an optimistic person, but I always uh, think about uh, what the potential risks are and um, try and manage those um, uh, in the best way, but I'm probably uh, I'm always I'm a, I always see myself as a risk taker. Um, so um, all the optimism comes out then. Okay. What is your opinion on the saying "work smarter, not harder"? I think it depends on every individual. Uh, some people have some um, kind of difficulties around organisational skills and. Um, they may have uh, other challenges so they have to work probably longer hours to achieve the same and so other people uh, are super efficient and they can do, do their work between nine to six I think everyone's different what would you say makes a good fit in your industry we're a technology company but obviously we don't just employ developers uh, so we need people that can communicate we need them to have business acumen and that obviously, um, ultimately, they're very customer-facing focused. And what do you look for in particular when you hire someone? When I'm hiring people, I really look uh, for a great, you know, people that really want to be uh, committed and to uh, put that all into um, uh, the, you know, the opportunity that I'm giving them. So that's absolutely critical. What are the three things in particular that you pay attention to when you're conducting an interview? One, to be well prepared. Candidate needs to be well prepared. Uh, I look for honesty and also their presentation skills. I, I want to see that they are, um, that have, they have something different and they kind of um, they resonate with our DNA. What tips would you give somebody when they are attending an interview? tips I could give, uh, um, let's say, a candidate would be really not to second-guess the interviewer. 
and really do your homework. You know, make sure that you really know about the company uh, that you're visiting or um, attending a webinar. Make sure you, you know about the company and you've done your homework. Uh, but, uh, you know, always obviously listen to the, to the interviewer uh, and second guess them. Okay, thank you. What short to long term changes do you envisage as a result of the coronavirus, both in your industry and to the wider economy? I think it's really going to change things. I think that uh, in our industry, uh, the technology sector, people will be working more remotely. Um, obviously, we have the technology to do that. People will be more home based and office based, there'll be less travel reducing CO2 emissions and also being, um, being more cost effective. Uh, I think customers will have more uh, virtual webinars and prospects. So um, I think um, there'll be more time in the day for people like salespeople and on boarders to spend time doing, you know, uh, really maximizing on the day. And I think in terms of the, uh, uh, the wider economy, uh, people will care more about the environment. So I think that's gonna be a real positive. Yeah. How do you think coronavirus will affect the job market, both in the short to medium term and the longer term? In the uh, short term, I think um, it's very much unknown. I think uh, obviously people are put on hold in recruitment. There may be some uh, redundancies, but I think in the medium to longer term, due to the fact that we're coming out of the European community, that we will have to rely on the people, most of the people that are in the UK. So I think um, employment will come back to uh, near the levels of where we were pre-COVID-19. So things will get back to normal due to the fact that we won't have open borders really. What are your thoughts on how to keep people motivated when remote working long term? The big thing about remote working is important to keep everybody motivated. So you should have lots of team talks and social activities. For instance, this evening we're doing a quiz night, encouraging uh, our employees to start new projects, new ideas. We're even doing a, a dragon's den. We're getting our, all the teams to work in groups and come up with ideas, money saving ideas. Um, so it's important to uh, stay connected. Obviously, um, it allows time for everyone to reconnect with customers and undertake training to improve their skills. You know, there's a downturn in sales. It's very concerning. So we're investing in new product developments, including things like AI, uh, data warehouse architecture, and creating new marketing initiatives to try and encourage new sales. So we're, we're developing new projects, which will help keep, keep people more motivated how has coronavirus affected hiring and candidate demand in your industry? Since uh, uh, we've been um, obviously in lockdown with coronavirus, um, we have obviously had to, we've honoured all the job offers we've, we've made prior to the virus. But going forward, obviously, we're not hiring people at the moment, uh, albeit we get quite a lot of CVs through from uh, various recruitment agencies. At this moment in time, we were actually just taking stock on a month by month, day by day basis, really. Um, we'll see, see what happens and how things develop. But one of the questions that you asked me was, uh, you know, will the market recover? Um, I think it will. And I think that uh, it will take time, maybe six, 12 months, 18 months. But um, once Brexit, uh, once Brexit happens and uh, we're relying on, um, uh, you know, U UK um, closed borders, we're relying on UK employees working in the UK, then I think we'll, we'll get back to more full employment. Mm -hmm.